Hey everyone, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we're getting into part three of our tutorial series on building a fan. Today we're going to be finishing off the model and then starting some of the UVs because now we're starting to get into the final steps of getting this into a finished model. So with that said, let's jump right into the tutorial. We're going to finish up the screws, we're going to build the back plane, and we're going to round out the rest of this model. Okay, so the first things first, uh, if you notice that my fan is a little bit different than yours, it's probably because I had a crash that happened. My Maya decided to uh, just delete my model entirely. I had to uh, basically rebuild the entire thing from scratch. So my model may look a little bit differently. I tried to follow my tutorial as best as I could to make sure that it looked the same as yours. But if you do have an issue, let me know in the comments. I can help you out as best as I can. Generally, these should be all the same though. Okay, so going forward, what we're looking at, the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna go finish these tabs off. So we're gonna focus on this, shift I to isolate. And then really, we're just gonna add a little bit more detail to it. We're going to just do a little bit of an extrude. Just kind of clamp that off a bit. Um, really, this piece is very simple, so that's all we're gonna do. I'm in the wrong menu here. All right, modeling. So let's just go ahead and support this guy. This is such a minor detail that it's just kind of there. We're not gonna really spend a whole lot of time on this. I just wanted to get it finished off now. That way we don't have to worry about it in the uh, future of this video. We'll add a little bit of separation on those edge loops right there just to let that thing kind of, kind of flow and not have such a sharp cut to it. And same thing kind of right there. Okay, cool. So there's our ring. The only thing we need to do is add a couple supporting edge loops here. Okay, cool. Show isolate view selected. All right, let's make sure that looks fine. It does. The only thing I am actually thinking about here, though, is if we look at our concept here, there's a little bit of a curve to it. That, and this is, for some reason, sitting inside the model. So let's do this. I'm going to pull that back. And I'm going to pull these vertexes forward and then rotate slightly and then squish and then rotate just to give that uh, kind of bend and make sure you're not destroying your model here because it will happen. All right, vertex, just going to adjust these a little bit, put these in, and then the other thing we're seeing right here is our tab is not exactly flush with the body this is supposed to rotate up and so when it rotates up when you rotate the fan body it stops here so we do want to make sure that functionally that's the way it's working um, so we may actually just need to pull this out a little bit further and then we'll pull these in a little bit further we'll smooth that And that's much better. The only thing is this has a much more curved look to it. And we're also a lot thicker than we should be. So let's leave you selected. So let's go here. We're gonna scale this in so we have a nice thinner tab. And then the other issue here is we have this, we have this kind of pinch right here. So we need to figure out how to smooth this out. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this edge loop. I'm gonna delete it. We're gonna smooth, that gives us a much smoother look. The only issue now is this area right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these, this edge loop, just that portion of it. Uh, and then we'll just pull it out a bit. And then we'll pull it in. And once we smooth it, it should look much smoother of a transition, and it does. The end, and right here. I think I'm going to remove an edge loop here. Uh, because it's no longer serving us. Delete edge vertex. Okay. And then let's just scale that inwards a little bit. And fix the 
blow on that. Okay, much better. So now if we look at it, looking a lot better there. I'm just thinking it's a little too thick. And remember, the whole goal here is just to match the reference as close as possible. And that means actually going through and adjusting things and trying to make sure that they look the way they do in the reference. Uh, it can be kind of a pain, but it's worth it in the long run. Because by the end of this tutorial, when you render this, it's gonna look, a, it's gonna be a pretty realistic looking model, so. Okay. I think I'm happy with that, so. Go to this side, delete the old one. This side, control D, open up our editor here. We'll do zero one. So I think I built this in the Z direction if I remember correctly. I didn't. Sorry, do that in the X direction. And flip it down over here. And we'll just place this right at the uh, base of this to be that little merge point. Cool, okay, so we have those little tabs. We're good there. Next thing is we're going to tackle the power button. The back of this model has two important elements, three if you count the screws. One is the power switch and the power cable. We're gonna do both of these. I'm gonna show you a unique trick to get the power cable to look the way we want it to. But so far we're gonna start with the power switch. Power switch is going to be a very basic shape. We're not gonna to go too in detail with this because there's really no sense in it unless you're making a model that needs to function properly. So we're just gonna make a rectangle here. We're going to extrude this inwards. Give a nice little edge there for the base of it. Not gonna go too far in either. And I'm gonna pull this out and I'm just extruding this multiple times. So now we're gonna give it the shape of the power switch, which if you've ever flipped one, you know they're kind of uh, they're kind of curved. We'll just add a little bit of a curve to it, and then we're gonna go mesh tools. We're gonna offset edge loop. We're gonna add an additional edge loop right in here, and we're gonna finish off that curve. Cool. Except I didn't grab something. Okay. So finish that off. Pull that in. Cool. So we have a nice power switch. Um, in the picture, if you look at it, it seems like it's in a flat state. If you want to toggle it to one side or the other, the only thing you're going to do is just pull some of these in. Uh, it's totally up to you. I'm going to leave it in this state. It'll be easier to texture. Um, the next thing we need to look at here, so we have our, our outer edge here. So mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're going to add the outer bev bezel. And to do this, we're gonna just scale. So all I did was change my wor my world snap and then scaled it out. And go right about there. And I'm gonna scale this itself because it kind of expanded a bit. All right. So there we have that. So that's our power switch. We're gonna go ahead and finish it off real quick. And then there's one detail I want to add to this that will kind of really will kind of really sell the uh, the plastic shaping of it. Actually, I'm going to delete that edge loop. So go ahead and do your edge loops on the inside there. This edge right here, we're going to bevel. Just do a slight bevel on it, and then the same thing on this outer edge on the switch. We're going to bevel, but we're going to do a very small bevel. We're not going to do a big one. I'm thinking like point. I'm going to do point 125. Okay. And then we need to add some support to it. Edge loop. And there we have a power switch. All right, so let's place this on the model. 
obviously it's too big. Go ahead and scale it down. I want to kind of look at, so there's a screw right above it. So it needs to have a little bit of space. It also needs to be a little bit wider. I'm noticing. And then these, the bezel itself is going out a little too far for my comfort. So I'm going to pull it in on either side. So that's that. Just sink it into the mesh and just have it floating right above there. That'll be our power switch. So that's gonna, that's gonna be that detail. Remember there's a screw right above it. Okay, so the next detail we need to look at here is the power cable is gonna be in two parts. You have your clamp, which clamps it to the body of the fan. And then you have the power cable itself and the plug and everything like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna model this clamp real quick. I'm going to pull in another cube. Focus on this. Change your subdivisions by two. And then if you looked at it, you can tell it, it's circular, but it's also flat on the sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude, pull up, scale in. And then we're going to scale this out a bit here. We're going to look at the concept again. Okay, so it's a little bit wider than that. Okay, and then we're gonna take this outer edge loop. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna change our world snap. We're just gonna scale it out slightly. And when we smooth this, it should look pretty, pretty good. Okay, continue looking at this. So the way these work is they're usually like, there's a little hole here at the bottom. It's kind of like a clamp. So we're gonna just extrude that inwards. And then we want to add some, we want to make this a little bit more circular. So mesh tools, we're going to go insert edge loop. Actually, let's do an offset first. We're going to offset on the center. And then we're going to do an insert edge loop. Right here. Okay, from here, we're going to select this edge loop, select this edge loop, and you're just going to scale them out slightly. We're going to round that off a bit. And then the same thing with these guys, except just let's deselect everything in the middle. Uh, and we will actually deselect that too, as well as these. Uh, the only thing we really want is that stuff. Ooh. And then let's just go ahead and grab these three as well. And we'll round that out. And that's going to be our plug. Our, our little cable clamp. I'm going to go mesh tools, insert edge loop, and we're going to go ahead and support it. Just on the outer rim right now, as well as this. And then sometimes these have a little bit of like a clamp that comes forward. So we're going to do mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're going to add just a little bit of a clamp here small offset piece that's just going to add to the detail of the model. Because again, this is where the cable comes into the fan and it kind of gets clamped down. And then we're going to go mesh tools again, insert edge loop. We're going to insert kind of far out because we want these corners to round a bit. as I can anyway. Support that guy. And then once we smooth, we've got what we're looking for aside from the fact that this internal piece is not doing what we want it to. So what I'm going to do, select half of this, delete that. And then from here, I'm going to just play with this and see what we need to do to get this to where we want it. And I think that's going to be the best way to do this.
Okay. So we'll scale it in, pull it in, and just kind of work it till we have more of a rounded look to it. And then the other thing I'm dealing with here is it's just a little too, it's a little too open. So I'm going to select all these faces here. And we're just going to slide these in, uh, these guys too. I'm just going to slide that in a bit. Because looking at this, there is a pretty good, okay. So if I smooth this, should be looking pretty okay. It's probably coming out a little bit too much, so I'm gonna pull this in. Okay, and then we're gonna go to mesh, mirror. I'm gonna mirror in the, oop. Yeah, mirror in the X direction, apply, change it to negative. Apply, close, good there. It's still looking a little thick. Okay, so this is an issue that's been happening uh, recently with Maya 2025. I don't know why it keeps doing this, but it's it's kind of a pain to deal with, but let me show you how to fix this. First things first is go to edit, delete by type, history. We're gonna go to change it. We're going to go to our mesh display and we're going to reverse normals. That's gonna give you this. Go to mesh display, unlock normals, mesh display, reverse normals. I don't know why this is happening, but it's generally a pretty easy fix. Okay, so the only thing I don't like here is we have a little bit, we've got this weird geometry going on here. So I'm gonna select these edge loops, deselect, actually deselect all this in the middle. And then we're just gonna scale slightly. And then we're going to go add oh, vertex, scale that up a bit. Just kind of playing with this to round it out as best as possible. Granted, it's a very small detail and you're really not going to notice it all that much. We still want to make sure we do what we can. All right, so we're good there. So we'll sync that in. Then the only other thing is mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're gonna add just a small bevel to this, or not a bevel, but a uh, a bezel. Just a slight one. And mesh tools, insert edge loop. Go ahead and just support that real quick. Not so worried about the inside of it. Cool, so there we go. So we got our little plug, uh, or our cable insert, I guess you'd call that. I don't really know what you'd call that. Okay, before we do the cable, there is one more piece I wanna do here. I'm gonna isolate this guy real quick. This is a pretty basic piece. It's black, so we're not gonna really worry about it. The only thing that's not black on it, though, is gonna be this rod in the center, and that's gonna be something that we handle when we get to our texturing process. Go ahead and just support this real quick so we can smooth it and not have any issues with it. That's what I want. Let's do, do one here too. Okay, there we go. And then let's fix that because we want this to be kind of coming into the model. This is technically the motor, uh, but because it's such a hidden detail, you really don't notice it all that much. We're just going to leave it as it is, and it's going to be a black piece, so we're not super worried about it. Okay. We're at a stage here where I don't think I really need this anymore, so I'm going to delete my reference. And now we're going to do the power cable. So cables are one of those things that can either be incredibly difficult or incredibly easy. I tend to do them a certain way. There are many ways to do them, but this way that I'm gonna show you is one of the easier ways that I've found. Okay, so with the power cable, we're gonna kind of operate the same way we did with the mesh, the uh, the safety bars or the whatever you wanna call this, the grate. Uh, and we're gonna do a curve. So we're gonna start off in our side view. 
We're gonna go up to the plug itself where the cable would go into. I'm gonna put a point there, put a point there. It's gonna come out and then it's gonna droop. And we'll adjust that a little bit here in a minute. And then we wanna stop right at the base of the fan and we're gonna go into our top view. And we're gonna start coming around here. And fans generally have a pretty long cable. I'm gonna do just like that. And I'm gonna end it right there. So now if we look at this, we've got this cable that wraps around the fan. And then I'm gonna just make some adjustments here. So I'm gonna turn on control vertex. I'm gonna delete this one way up here. That way we have more of a pull. We're just gonna kind of smooth this curve out. These dropped a little bit, so we want to even those out because this will technically be laying on a surface. Make sure those are as even as they can be with everything else. And then we're going to take this whole selection down here, actually. Perfect. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're going to do as we've got our we've got our cable here the only other thing that i really want to do is we have to anticipate that there's going to be a plug on this so we're going to do control vertex we're just going to lift these ones up a little bit just because there will be a plug there okay and you can do this cable however you want to if you want to have it more in the background so you don't see it it's totally up to you i'm doing kind of like a sitting on a desk is like an advertisement type deal so we'll take this cable, we're gonna to go to our polygon modeling, and we're gonna do a sweep mesh. So you'll notice that we've got a very cylindrical mesh, it's circular, we don't want that, that's not the look we want, because if we look at this fan, it has a rectangular cable with a little divot on the inside of it. So we're gonna to change to rectangle. We're going to definitely adjust the height because that's way too tall. Honestly, the scale is a bit much too. Okay. So let's do, we'll just kind of play with these settings until we get something that we like. Height needs to go up a little bit. That's about right, that's fine. Okay, so we've got our little corner radius there, that's good. And we'll just kind of adjust this. And these cables are generally kind of beveled. So let's look, make sure we've got everything we need. It's looking really good. Okay. So go ahead and delete your curve because we don't need it anymore. And then we're gonna focus on this guy. So the first thing I wanna do is we have to figure out how to get this cable to have a divot in it because looking at our reference image, there is a divot that moves along this cable. Uh, this is, it seems like a very complicated task, but it's actually really simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to mesh. We're gonna go to, I'm sorry, mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're gonna insert a center edge loop on the top and the bottom of the mesh. And then with those two selected, we're gonna go ahead and bevel them. And then we're gonna increase the segment by one. And then Q escape that. And then we're gonna select these faces themselves. Oops. Oh, I've got two meshes for some reason. Don't worry about that then. Okay, so make sure you have your one mesh. Okay, so we're gonna select these faces. And then the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna extrude it in. It's gonna put your extrusion point all the way down here, your little controller. So we're gonna go in here and then we're just gonna pull in. Make sure it did it on both sides and scale it in slightly. Eh. And scale it in just a tad bit. And now when you smooth it, you have a cable with a nice little divot in the center. 
So that would be the division between the two wires of the cable. And you can play with this and make it smaller. Uh, in fact, I think what I want to do is because I don't like how thick it is. I'm going to I'm gonna actually just nice tools. We're going to offset an edge loop here. And I'm just going to add a smaller inner core because I don't want that much. I don't want that much. Okay. And then what we can do is we can just select these outside ones. Make sure you select the right ones though. And then just uh, mesh tools, delete edge vertex. All right. Now we'll do the same process. And the only reason I did that is just because it looked a little too like unbelievable. Uh, if you ever, well, you ever look at one of these cables, like the divot's actually pretty small. Okay, that's much better. That has a better flow to it. So then the last thing we'll do is we'll look at this, make sure it's actually just kind of fitting in there properly. Uh, it is for the most part. I think what I'm gonna do is scale this a tad bit and just drop it down. Move that out, and there we have our power cable. So that's it for the power cable. Now let's model a quick plug, and then we'll be able to start working on the uh, the screws. Okay, so we're gonna do a plug. So let me pull up a plug here. Uh, power plug. I'm just gonna pull up a basic image of a regular power plug. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at this guy right here. Just a basic power plug, nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and I'll pull that up on my second monitor. You can find these anywhere on the internet, so I'm not really gonna include that in the reference images or anything like that, but go ahead and if you need to, add it to your reference library. Okay, so we're gonna start with a cube. Same thing, we're gonna go poly cube two, two, two. Okay, and so this thing is a pretty interesting shape. So I'm gonna start off with the base of it. And then I'm just gonna give myself a little point of reference here for where the front of this is. It's gonna be this part right here. Cause when we do this, this curls down a bit. And then it curls down a tad bit more. And it goes and starts turning into the actual like body of the the plug. Okay, and then we've got the back. So the back is interesting because it's got these little slits in it. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to extrude, or we're going to scale this in, and then extrude this back, and then just scale that down. We're going to come back to this to add those slits in a minute. Right now, we're just going to block out the plug. So we're going to scale this guy out again, scale in this direction, as well as this direction. And then it does kind of, it continues to scale a little bit, but it does start to taper off a bit. So we're going to scale there, and then it stops right about there. Okay. And then from here, we're going to go forward a bit. We're going to take this outer ring, G, change your world, and then scale that out. And remember when you do this, scale it back in because it does kind of create like a weird uh, wedge effect. We don't want that. And actually that entire thing needs to kind of come in just a tad bit. Okay. So there we have our basic plug. I think it needs to be a little bit wider, but okay. So that's our basic plug. First thing we're going to do, we've got three areas on the back that need to be extruded in and in a weird fashion. So we're going to go mesh, mesh tools, insert edge loop. The first one's kind of right at this edge. And then there's another one a little bit further up. And then there's one right about here. Okay, so these are offset because the way this piece works is it flexes to kind of keep the cable from breaking. There needs to be some separation between these. So 
we're going to go to mesh tools insert edge loop we're going to add just a tiny bit of separation between these just to give them some spacing okay i think that's preferable preferable Okay, so I'm going to actually just do these three first. I'm going to pull these in. Again, we're just scaling. Okay, so we have our flexi joint there. Same thing down here. We're going to pull them in. And just scale them up a bit. And then we'll do the opposite on this side. smooth this we'll get those nice little ridges that we're looking for these do need to be a little bit deeper though so what we're going to do is we're going to take the faces that we extruded inwards we're just going to pull them in deeper trying to keep with the uh, actual design of this let's see okay So it's a really weird piece, but once it's smooth, it'll look fine. The other thing we need to add is these little uh, the little grips for pulling the plug out. So we're going to go mesh tools. We're going to offset edge loop here. We're going to offset right about there. Mesh tool, insert edge loop. We're just going to add this. Just going to add that. Okay. And from here. We'll grab this guy. I want to kind of just center this off a little bit more. Same thing here. Okay. Select these two outers. And we're just going to barely extrude them. They're just kind of grip detail, so it's not a huge deal to stress about how they look. Just want to make sure... Eh, we'll go a little bit taller, actually. I do want them to kind of show up at least. Okay, so if we smooth that, you should get that nice detail in there. Yeah, we will. Okay, so the next thing is we now have our plug location here. I'm going to pull these inwards a little bit. Right about there. Okay, what we're going to do, mesh tools, go to offset edge loop. those prongs kind of their shape and then we're going to extrude these out and so the one on one side it's going to be slightly bigger because it's got that safety latch on it so what we're going to do is we're going to just extrude that detail Here, I'm going to take these two faces, scale them up, and I'm going to pull this guy back a bit. Same thing here. Let's try to shape that the way we need to. And then I think, I think we need to actually pull these forward a little bit. Gives us that plug detail. And then I'm looking at the plug that I picked, and it does kind of go back a bit, so we'll just do that. That way it's got that little safety latch on there, and we're okay. So the next thing is we gotta 
we got to get the little circle in there. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to try to kind of match these up as best as possible. Uh, let's find this one. There we go. So we're going to pull this one back here. And I believe that's, yeah, that's there. Okay, so we're just looking. We're going to pull that there. And from here, I can. I'm going to pull this one forward a little bit. Yeah. Do the same thing here. We're just trying to give ourselves the geometry we need. And then we're going to use these pieces here in the front. And then we're just going to create our... We're going to extrude them. Pull them inward. And then go ahead and use the circularize tool. And this is going to look kind of funky for a minute. We just need to work with it. Scale it in a bit. And then we're going to work on pulling these back. So grab your birds where you need to. Let's a vert here. Oh, nope, that is the vert we need. Okay. We're going to pull these back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces. I'm gonna go to mesh. Sorry, edit mesh, extract, and I'm just gonna pull this off. And I do the same thing over here. Because of the way I want to work with this. Okay. So we're gonna work on one side of this. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this thing in half. Delete that delete that because it's just going to make our life a lot easier. Okay. So, edge. Just trying to shape this again. And then this guy needs to come forward and out. I want him to line up right about there. About where everyone should be lining up. And then we're going to flatten that. I think that's part of that, so we're going to flatten it too. And then just kind of correct your geometry here. Just make sure that you don't have too much distortion or anything like that. It's not going to matter too, too much, but. It is something we want to pay attention to. So go ahead and extrude this in. Delete that hole. And we're going to go to... We're going to save because it's been a minute. But a mesh mirror should still have the settings from your last one. Uh, you'll notice that that happened in the back. What we can do when that happens, just turn off merge border. Uh, do not merge borders. Okay. And then on simple objects like this, you can just select the edge and then deselect this portion because what it's doing is it's trying to average everything together and you just don't, you don't necessarily want that. We're going to merge these, turn up the tolerance. There we go. That's what we wanted. Okay. So now if I smooth that, it should be good. Same thing here. Select the inside, merge, tolerance it up and we're good to go. All right. So now we can just... Modify, center pivot, modify, center pivot, drag this back in, just get it ready to be reattached, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. Tool sensor zoop. And yes, technically you could do this beforehand and then just duplicate it and then resize it the way you want to. Uh, but I do find, especially with like tutorials like this, it's a little bit better to practice the tools themselves. So I'm making you do this twice. because I think it's an important skill to learn. All right, so let's circularize, cool. There we go, we have it, we're good. We're gonna pull this guy out. This one should be a lot straight, a lot more straightforward. Uh, in fact, that's really all we had to do. So we'll pull that, delete that. We have our plug. Go ahead and go to mesh mirror. Turn off the merging of border edges, okay. 
And then we will select all these, get rid of these. And if you're wondering, the reason I selected that one is just because I can't really see the other one. So we'll merge, chew up that tolerance, and same thing in here. And there we go. Okay, so we'll drag this guy back. We're gonna go to modify, center pivot again. Drag it back to the model. And then we're going to go to, we're gonna add some of the details we need to now or some of the supporting edges. So just go to mesh tools, insert edge loop, just support the inner circles and the outer circle. Just wanna get those added in now before we actually get them added to the uh, mesh. It'll just save a little bit of time and some headache down the road. Okay. And I think we're good there. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to this, select all those, hit combine. And then the issue here now is we need an additional edge loop. So we'll go to mesh tools, insert edge loop, just add one there. Add one there, add one here, and add one here. Okay. And then it should be as easy as just selecting all of these and merging them. So you see we had that issue happen again. Again, this is, if you're on Maya 25, this happens for some reason, just go to reverse your normals. Sign existing standard surface, okay. Uh, sometimes it just nukes the material altogether. So just assign a surface to it or a material to it and you should be okay. Uh, but now moving forward, we have these. Okay, that's nice and attached. We can anticipate that that's probably gonna happen again over here. I'm gonna save real quick so I don't lose this piece. Whenever you're getting weird buggy issues like that, go ahead and save. It's probably the best idea. Move that, those are now part of the plug. We look kind of goofy, but we're gonna fix that now. Okay, so mesh tools, answer edge loop. Let's go ahead and lock these guys off. And then what we're gonna do is boom, 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 and boom. Okay, so if we smooth this now, we're getting we're getting the shape that we want for the most part. We need to add some edge loops here. Okay, so we have our plug. And the only thing I really want to do here is go, gee, we're going to add a little bit of support here in the middle just to give these some more uh, structure because right now they're looking kind of fake. Like they weren't actually molded by machine. Okay, that's better. And then we've got kind of an additional, let's see. I kind of want to smooth this outer edge out here. So we're gonna go up into our top view and select vertex. I'm gonna select these outer vertex here. We're just gonna pull them down a tad bit and then pull them in. That way that's gonna smooth off that, uh, that actual area. And then we just need to support these little notches back here. A lot of this would normally be done uh, with a texture. And you absolutely can if you want to. However, for this case, we're actually going to be building this model. So I wanted to I wanted to add this the details that you're trying to accomplish in there without relying too heavily on actual materials and bump mappings and things like that. Because in the end, we're going for a photorealistic fan. So textures are not going to necessarily help us play to that. They can. You just you end up spending a lot more time on the texture than you really need to. Uh, instead, you could just be using a material. And so we have a break right there. We need to figure out why that's broken. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so let's. What we'll do is we'll just go to mesh tools, multi cut. Go right up here. Right here at the corner. Enter. 
here and right there and i think that linked up i'm not sure though let me see vertex escape just merge these just in case i'm not sure if they actually created their own or if they created multiple sometimes that multi-cut tool like that right there it'll do that Tools, insert loop, we should be able to just, uh, nope, okay, multi-cut. Enter, to escape, vertex, we'll just merge that real quick, make sure it's there, and same thing up here. Okay, so if we smooth this now. We have a nice look to our plug. It's got that kind of organically molded shape in there. And then I just want to see if I can do this. So mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're gonna go right across. Just support the top here. And then I think that did it all the way around it did. So three. So we have a little bit of an end gone going on up here. I'm not sure why. But let's take a look at that. I do think it's because we're not actually pulling through the mesh. So let's just add these details here. So mesh tools, we're gonna go multi-cut. And some of this is always just solving issues on the fly. notice here yeah so we have a lot of loops that are actually not continuing through this model and most of them are stemming from this so you'll notice that this portion of the model is actually quite messy um, because it's such a minor detail we're not going to spend a ton of time on it if it's something you do want to clean up you can go through and rip the back off and kind of re-extrude it and rebuild it uh, for the purposes of this tutorial I'm not going to do that because it's gonna be a solid material object. There's no damage to it. There's no shine to it. As far as the UV goes, it's gonna be a very simple UV. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on the plug itself. But again, if that's something you would like to clean up, go through, clean it up, practice the skills that you've learned throughout this tutorial series and get it to a point where you want to get it to. I'm just not gonna to waste too much time on it because it would end up dragging this tutorial out for far longer than I need to. and with such a simple object, it's really not necessary. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate this now. And we're gonna just bring it over to our cable. And get it locked in there. Just trying to line it up the way it would be. From here, we'll go vertex. We'll just drag this up a bit. Awesome. So there we have it. There's our plug. And the fan is done aside from the screws. So now we're going to go ahead and model the screws real quick. Okay, so now we're going to do the screws. The screws we're going to handle in a very simplified manner. We're not going to like worry about making the threads or anything like that. Just because there's really no need to. You're not going to be doing a full disassembly tutorial. If you are going to do a disassembly tutorial, let me know. Let me know if you want or a disassembly video. If you are going to do a disassembly video, let me know. If you want a tutorial on how to make these screws look realistic, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, put something together. And I'll put something together for you guys. Okay, so we're going to extrude this in just like we normally do. We're going to kind of keep it right about there. Delete that. I'm going to go edge. top view let's just do this that way we're keeping even we're gonna go bridge and a division and then we're gonna go vertex we're gonna scale these guys so you're doing your standard quad workflow we're gonna just quad this off not worry about it oops Here we have our cylinder so when we're thinking about this, we want to look at this as how are we going to add a screw cap or a like a, a screw divot into this. So the easiest way 
is we're going to go ahead and start building the topology a little bit manually. So we're going to go to mesh tools. We're going to go to multi-cut tool. We're going to go select this one and select that one. And hit bam. This one and this one. Right here. Bam. Okay, so now that you've quadded it off just for the screw, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this. So you're going to select all of these faces on the interior. And we're going to go ahead and extrude them in one more time. Just to give us a nice supporting ring on the outside. And then here we're going to use the deformer. The deformer is going to give us the kind of cap of the screw and it's just kind of a faster way to get to that point. So we're going to go up here to our deform tab. We're going to go to nonlinear. We're going to do wave. We're going to adjust our amplitude a little bit. Pull our wavelength in. We'll take our wavelength, we'll adjust it up a little bit more until we have a nice rounded shape for the top of the head of the screw, which is looking like right about there. And then we're good to go. So take this, edit, delete by type history to get rid of that deformer. So that deformer is gone now. And so now we're going to take these and we're going to extrude them in. Oops. Just pull it down. Go ahead and flatten it. And then we'll pull it down once more. And we're, at this point, we're gonna start kind of curving it in. And then we'll do one more pull down. And then curve it in one more because when you look at the screw, the way the screwdriver actually kind of goes into it, the tip itself actually kind of fits down into a little chasm. And we wanna make sure we replicate that. So if we smooth this, look at this. Looking pretty good there. All right, cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is kind of fix this interior. It just needs to be pulled in a little bit. It's kind of screwed up there. Okay. So we're gonna go mesh tools, insert edge loop. We're gonna set this up so that doesn't get damaged. And then we shouldn't need to do a whole lot more to this. The issue is, is we wanna support these edges. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a supporting edge loop here. And supporting edge loop here. And one here. And one here. So now when we smooth that, that nice kind of recessed screw portion. The issue though, is we now have some edge loops that are screwing up our geometry. So and what we can do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these guys on either side. I'm going to go to Mesh Tools and then Delete Edge Vertex. Or Edit Mesh and Delete Edge Vertex. I'm going to then just take these and pin them here. Because it's okay to have a triangle here. And then the same thing up here, we're gonna take mesh tools, we're gonna to do multi-cut. We're gonna select right there and then go directly right there. Just make sure that actually did what we needed it to, and it did, okay. We'll do the same thing here. Enter. That one did not do what we wanted it to, so we'll just merge those together. Okay. I think we merged the wrong thing though. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And actually looking at that, we're gonna not do that. Because right now we have a quad there. So that doesn't really need to change much. Okay. The only thing I'm not liking is that I've got too much of a point up here. So the I'm going to come in on my side view. And we're just going to go to vertex. We're going to drop this point down a bit. Entirely. And then we have like a ring over here that I don't know why we do. Unless that's just the drop off. I think that's just the drop off point. So. Drop that off a little bit. 
fix that. So there we have our screw top. Uh, you can go in here and add some more supporting, so mesh tools, insert. We'll add one more down here, and then one in the middle, because if you look at the tips of screwdrivers, they do kind of like, they kind of angle. So once we add that, that's good. We've got our screw cap. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just extrude this guy out. So select these outer edges. We're gonna go straight down. We're gonna add one there, one there. And then here's where we're gonna curve inwards. And then we're gonna go one more time inward and then just create a little cylinder cap there because that's all we're going to work with here and if you want to and for just for the heck of it i'll just point it off i'm not going to create the actual spiral uh notching that is for kind of a more advanced process and we're just not going to go over it today all right so we'll cap this off Vertex, let's scale these out. Okay, cool. All right. Then we'll go to mesh tools, insert edge loop. We'll just kind of lock this guy off a bit. Give it the support. Do not forget to support your models. And then we'll support that. And we're gonna take this inner one and just scale it out tight it's just slightly because most screws kind of have like a rounded bed edge to them and there's our screw okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit delete my type history i'm going to just name it should be naming your models but i haven't been uh keep that in mind when you're working on things rotate that 90 degrees and let's get it scaled and put it into place There, that's good. Is this our nice little screw detail? We'll just drop it in a little bit. Okay. And then from here, we'll just control D, move this across. Should be relatively the same positioning. And then control D up to the top. So we've got our screws added in the front and I'll take these guys. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just do one control D modify freeze transformations scale in the Z and then drag this back here. You can technically do this with every single one of them if you want to. In fact, I think I'll do that. Uh, let's see. Modify freeze transformations. We'll do the same thing here. Control D both of them, move them back. The only thing is, is that normally you can't do a negative like this at the same time up. Oh, sometimes you can. Okay, so we'll just drag those and pop them in. Make sure they're recessed enough. Okay, so that's good. We're good there. So now we're gonna take one screw, Control D, move it down, and then focus right here. We'll just kind of pop it in place there. Leave just enough. There we go. And then there were two more on this guy, so we'll control D down. We'll put one here. And then one straight across. Just give that the spacing. Okay. Don't forget to save your scene. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my concept one more time. And I'm just going to look at it, make sure there's nothing I'm really missing. Ah, we are missing something. We're missing this top handle. So let's go ahead and model that. And that just kind of inserts into the back of this thing. So no big deal. Easiest way we're going to do this is we're going to go into this view. Uh, file save real quick. Alright, we're going to go to Curves, 
I'm gonna go right at the center here and then just come out. Okay. I'm gonna look at this. Can I just kind of pull this out back to where it needs to go actually? Okay. So looking at this, it's kind of it's got a kind of like a warp to it. So we're gonna go to Control Vertex. I'm gonna take these, pull them up, pull this up a bit, uh, just pull that guy. Then we're gonna actually thicken up the bottom of this a tad, because the way this works is we will pull up. We're gonna rotate because it kind of comes out at a weird like angle, and this is so you can kind of adjust the fan, even though I doubt that it works that well. Just continue shaping this curve to get the shape that we want. Okay. And then we're going to pull that up. Just kind of bend it the way it needs to be bent. Same thing here because we want to we want to give it the space that we need to for that actual piece. And let's just look at it again. So it does have kind of a sharper curve up here. So we'll go control vertex. We'll just pull this up a bit, pull this in. That gives us that nice sharp curve. I'm gonna do a sweep mesh. So we'll go polygon modeling, sweep mesh. It's way too big. Just pull it down, add some resolution to it. Okay, so we're gonna just redo this for the most part. So I was not paying attention. So this is a little messy, but we'll we'll clean this up. In fact, I want to look at my view here. So let's just straighten everything out. Get that the way we want it to be. And then I think select my curve. Vertex. I'm going to take this entire thing and rotate it. And just try to place it there because it lines up pretty well with that. And looking at the reference, it's got a little bit more of a gap than that. Okay. We'll just flatten that and then rotate it. And then I think I want to just pull this down slightly. Pull it out. Same here. Control vertex. I don't know why there's two meshes. I think it's because I smoothed it. Um, but, okay. So we'll look at this. I'm okay with the way that's looking. I think the only thing I do want to adjust here... Just, it's just still a little too wonky looking. So we're going to adjust the point there, just scale it to try to flatten it out. And we're just going to get that. I just want it to be a straight piece of wire, and that's what we've got now. So we're good there. And we're just going to kind of move it forward so it meshes up with the wires. And we're good there. Okay. So delete that mesh. This is the smoothed one. Okay. And we're going to delete this curve. Uh, wait a minute. Don't delete that one. Delete the smooth one. Delete the smooth one. We're going to go to our sweep. We're just going to add a little bit more resolution to try to preserve that, that, that edge. Okay. And now from here, we'll delete that going to go to show isolate view selected 
quad this off real quick. Okay. And then we're going to go to mesh mirror. Change this to the positive. Show isolate be selected. Okay. We've got our little handle now. Let's move that out. It's looking fine. Save your file. Save scene. Okay. That's it. That is the fan model. The fan is complete. You have modeled the entire thing. Now we're going to set up and start UVing the model itself. Okay, so we've reached a point here now where we want to just clean up and prepare for UV modeling or UV mapping. The UV mapping will be a separate tutorial, but we're going to get our model prepped and ready to go for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything, go to edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze transformations. And you may have noticed throughout your process, you've got all of these different little groupings that have been created in your outliner. Generally, you can select them and just hit delete and those just go away. So we'll just delete those. Just watch your model to make sure you're not actually deleting your model. Uh, that's just a random piece that shouldn't be there. Okay, these are all just random groups that don't need to exist anymore. Again, just watch your model as you're going through this that you're not deleting them. Okay, so we've got our model set up. We haven't deleted anything. Everything's going okay. Uh, we know kind of what everything is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these. I'm gonna go to mesh and combine. We just want these as one piece. This is going to be the front underscore great. And then we're gonna select all of these. This is going to be mesh combine. We're gonna name this rear underscore great. Just sweet. There's a couple other groups here that I missed. Uh, delete. No. So, problem is, is that once we've done this, we've created a uh, a bunch of transforms for some reason. So we're gonna go to duplicate or delete by type, non-deformer history, edit, ungroup. We're gonna ungroup these. Edit, ungroup. Same thing there, same thing there. It's gonna create all of these dead transforms. And then once they're dead, you can just delete them. Uh, this is part of going through and actually cleaning up your mesh and making sure that it's gonna, it's not gonna carry any errors over into another application when you move it. Okay, so we're gonna title this fan back, fan underscore back underscore panel. I'm gonna change this to fan underscore power underscore switch okay we've already named our greats and this is fan rear ring and front ring okay so looking at this if you were looking dead on in it and take this one fan knob left and fan knob right. Okay. This part, this process is a little tedious and annoying, but it's kind of important to do. Fan stop ring left. I just copy that. Just change the uh, control V. We're gonna change that to right. Okay. And then we're gonna name this fan support ring. Fan base. If it adds a one, that means that it's probably still seeing something somewhere. That's okay. We'll figure out why that's there. Okay, this sweep mesh. Fan power cord. Let's see. Fan plug. Plug. Got this cube. Fan plug. Uh, we'll call that cap. That's the fan blade, blade, and then fan body, fan body. Okay, so we should have everything named here. I'm gonna select everything, go to edit and group. We'll just name this desk, fan, group. That way we have a organized 
body. We haven't organized everything else. The only other thing we need to do is I forgot to add a screw down here. So we're going to take this screw or we'll take screw number eight. That's, and you can use your middle click button. Use mouse middle click to just drag it up and put it underneath. Just so you can kind of keep your uh, your structure there. And then we'll just rotate this. Rotate you. What is that? We want 90 degrees, right? Yeah. 90 degrees. I'm going to just drop this down here. Over here. And then we'll center this with the actual hole. Scale it up a little bit. This will be a larger screw. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's good. Okay, so everything's grouped together. You have your fan all organized. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a checker material. The checker material itself is going to be super important for us to make sure that we're not getting any stretching or skewing throughout the model. So we're going to select the entire model, go to assign new material, and we're going to choose just a basic Lambert. Once you do that, open up your Lambert material options and we're going to go to a website. This website is uvchecker.vinzi.xyz. This is a project created by George Hurtado. Hurtado? I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but it's a wonderful customized application that allows you really customizable UV checker maps. And these are, again, really important for establishing where you're getting stretching and where certain shells are located. You're going to generate one, just do the basic one. I usually generate this in a 2K. You'll export it out, save it. And then I have one saved currently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna browse over to that guy. I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna hit this little file folder. We're gonna go to where I stored that. So here's my grid file. We'll open this up. And you notice nothing changed. So the reason nothing changed is because you're not viewing your materials in your viewport right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit textured. And that's going to show us the abomination of a UV that we have right now. So the way this works is when you're modeling and you're extruding, you're taking basic objects and you're kind of twisting them and turning them. So you would think that your ring would, you know, just look flat. But if we open up our UV editor here and I move this over, that's actually what it looks like. So we don't want this to look like this. And this is where this UV map is going to help us. This is, you can tell it's showing you where it's stretching because you can't see any logical numbers or anything like that. So go ahead and close that. We're going to file, save scene as. We're going to name this fan UV because we're in a new process now. We're in a new modeling stage. Um, and we're going to do a couple basic UVs on this one. And then the next tutorial, I'm going to go through and UV the entire object itself. So to give you a basic example, if you do want to continue forward, we're going to look at this ring. So we're going to go show, isolate, view selected. So we have our ring. And in all honesty, this is a very simple shape. There's nothing super difficult about this. So what I like to do is I will center it as best in my view as possible. I'm going to go up here to UV. We're going to do a camera based UV, camera based. And you'll notice immediately that made a huge difference. And if you look at your UV editor, it made a massive difference. The only problem is, is that that's your entire object. It's completely flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to go unsmooth this. We're going to go to edge. And if you can't see because of the, the texture, it does get kind of difficult to see sometimes. Um, you can just turn it off and go to a standard checker mode. Or if you want to, you can just uh, turn off the viewport texture for a minute. So we're going to select this outermost ring. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here in our UV editor. We're going to go cut sew. And you're going to go cut. And we're going to do the same thing with the innermost ring. You can just hit G to redo that. So from here, what we can do, we can right click, go to UV, select all of our UVs, go up here to modify and hit unfold. And that's going to show us an unfolded model, but you'll notice that we missed something. So something got jacked up there. So let's figure out what happened. I think it was on this interior ring. It's like it didn't select a bottom portion. It didn't. So just make sure when you're cutting like this that you do have everything. Uh, we'll go to cut, cut, and then try that again. So modify, unfold. 
Okay, so there we go. So that worked and did what we wanted to do. So the reason we did this this way is we're trying to keep the seam behind the model. We don't want to really deal with seeing it too, too much. So now you have what are called UV shells. So you can go here, UV and UV shell. So you can see that you can select two different shells. So we're going to select this back shell, which looks terrible. Uh, there's some sort of issue going on there. So we'll have to figure that out. And then our front shell. The front shell is nice and laid out. If we turn our texture back on, we look at it, we don't have a lot of stretching going on. Actually, everything's looking really nice right now. And then we have a bit of a screw up down here somehow. So this is where we need to establish what happened. And it looks like we've got some sort of weird twisting here. So we'll just wanna correct this. Oh, I see there's an extra face here. Okay, so the problem here is that we have an extra face that we shouldn't so that's actually an issue with our model so we can just go through and merge these so this is this is going to be one of those areas too where you start to find where your problems are uh especially with uving and then what we'll do is we'll just go vertex again need to find where this goes this goes right there uv grab this uv and we'll sew those together merge and then it looks like we have the same issue over here somewhere. Yeah, we do, right here. So we'll look at these, we'll go vertex, and we'll merge those. And then we'll come over here, we'll go UV, grab those, go to cut, sew, and merge. And then we'll just unfold this again. We're just gonna select this back shell, modify, unfold. That'll give us our nice circular build. And we'll take this and we'll scale it. And we'll just add it here. Don't really care too much about the back. We care more about the front because the back isn't gonna be seen as much. So now if we go show isolate select. You can see you have a much better looking UV on this. It's cleaner, it's more recognizable and you can tell what's going on there. Now, the big thing is, is how do we transmit it back here? So you can do this one of two ways. You can either duplicate the entire object or you can copy its object or you can copy its attributes. The problem with that is being that we have an issue that we just saw or we just fixed on that model. We need to fix it on this model before we do that. So we need to go vertex. We'll just correct that real quick. And then over here we have another problem. We'll just fix that. So we should be good. So show isolate view selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this object. We're going to select this one. We're going to go up to mesh transfer attributes and you're going to notice it's going to transfer but it's not going to look exactly right the easiest way to fix this is go in select your uv shell modify unfold it'll correct itself and smooth everything out same thing with the rear piece just move it and then you can scale everything back and you have two very clean uvs for the fan body Okay, so looking at this, you now have your clean UVs. They may be uh, flipped upside down, but that's okay, not a big deal. Uh, if you want to, you can rotate them just to make things easier on yourself. I know it would bug me if I didn't, so I'm going to do it. Because okay. in the end, you want these, you want this text to be readable. So I can look at this and I can say, okay, cool. Those are both pointing in the same direction. Everything's working there properly. The last piece I'm gonna show you guys is we're gonna do this real quick, this outer ring. So we're gonna go show, isolate, select, view selected. This is a much more complicated shape because we have so many holes, but in reality, it's really not that much different. So we're gonna unsmooth it. Let's save our scene real quick. Since this is such a complex object, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go down here. We're gonna look at the way we built our model. We built our model in sections, we arrayed it around. And so we're gonna kind of try to UV in that fashion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go select these faces here and we're gonna tab just to paint them. Paint your selection, be careful not to grab anything you don't need. Paint around here. Good. The same thing here. Okay, so that should be our one piece. We pull this up, it shouldn't be pulling anything else. 
we're good there. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna go to select, select similar. It's gonna select the entire interior of our circle or of our body here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale, pull it in. I just do this just to kind of look and test and make sure that I'm not pulling anything else I don't need. You can see we selected an edge that we didn't need. So what we'll do is I'll just double click this entire edge and then I'll control click it just to get rid of it. And then we'll test one more time to make sure we're not pulling anymore. And you should see an even flow of edges. It looks like we screwed up back here too, did we? Uh, no, we're actually okay back here. That should have selected everything and then you notice it'll miss a couple up at the top. It'll usually miss a couple somewhere. Uh, no big deal, just paint them in. And just be careful not to select anything additional. Okay, and so we'll scale this in, making sure we didn't select anything else that we don't need. It looks like we are okay. Nope, we did select an outer ring, so we'll just shift, click the entire ring, and then click it off. And then scale one more time. So looking at this, we look like we're good. The control Z that we're gonna go UV camera based. And this should in theory give us the UV that we're looking for. We are still missing a couple pieces, and it looks like somehow we had another face selected. So let's just back off a bit. we did mirror a piece somehow. We pull this in now. We look at this. Doesn't look like we have any issues. Doesn't look like we, oh, we do have a problem. So we have an additional face that's been selected. So the problem here, and this is where this can get kind of rough, is that we can leave that in there. So with that extra piece in there, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna go UV going to do a camera based and we're gonna take this and move it and we'll scale it down real quick and so you'll notice if we look at our UV there is a UV right here so what we're gonna do is select similar it should select all of those little interior UVs and we should be able to move them off or at least okay so what we can do is we can just deselect these Looks like we actually might have an issue on the mesh somewhere. So I'll go through and remove all of these. So we want to maintain these in the selection. We just don't want these exterior ones. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll just go UV and then delete UV. And that should get rid of them. Okay, and then this area right here is what I'm concerned about. It's an unmerged, unmerged UV. Yeah, that's all it was. Okay, so that's how you get your model split into a way that's going to allow you to have uh, individual UV shells that are a little bit more easy to manipulate. Because now all we have to do is select all of these. And actually what we'll do is we'll just uh, We'll select the whole model. And then we'll go UV. So we want to make sure we grab all of them. Deselect the main ring. And then go to UV and then generate a camera based UV. Oh, sorry. So what we want to do is we'll go to face mode. We'll select all of the faces. We will deselect the faces on the interior group that we just did. We'll go UV. Try to that out a bit. UV and then generate a camera based UV. That's going to give us our two separate shells. And if you look at this now, if you go UV shell, you've got the exterior shell and the interior shell. So the easiest way now, and what we're going to do, is we're going to take this down at the bottom to hide the seam right in the center. We're going to select this ring and we're going to go to cut cell and cut. And then we're 
we're going to take these UVs here and let's go ahead and save this real quick because we're doing a complex operation and Maya likes to crash during this. We're going to go to modify and unfold and then we're going to rotate and move them down here. Okay, so we have our first ring unfolded there. The next thing is this is going to be the more complicated unfold. We're going to go to modify unfold. It may take a second. So now you have your two unwraps. Everything's looking pretty good. Uh, the only thing we want to do is we're going to want to straighten our border edges. So if we select our border edge here, go to modify, straighten shell. And then the same thing up here. We're going to rotate this, scale it down, scale it out a bit. I'm going to put this guy in here. And then show, isolate, select, view selected, object mode, allow, save scene. And you can see now we have a nice structured UV. And you can read everything. It's, everything's flowing properly. There's no really weird stretching. You may get a little bit of stretching down here on the bottom, especially when it's smoothed. Um, but that's just going to be where your seam is, where your seam lines up. Thankfully, with a model like this, we don't really have to worry too, too much about that. But that's how you UV some of the more complicated objects on this. You're free to move forward if you want to. The next tutorial is going to be solely on getting the rest of this UV completed. Uh, one thing I do want to note here is if you're experiencing a lot of crashing during your UV process, make sure you're saving often. Uh, with the out, outer body of the fan, especially if you're on Maya 2025, there seems to be a lot of problems with unfolding it and straightening it out and cleaning it up. So just make sure you're saving often. Don't get too frustrated with it. It does take a little bit of time. But otherwise, I will see you all in the next tutorial.